Imran Khan went from cricketer to star, then prime minister of Pakistan. A year ago, he was ousted by a vote of no confidence. Since then, Imran Khan has been fighting for power, campaigning throughout Pakistan. A few months ago, he was shot with four bullets in his leg. Imran Khan sees the current government behind this attack. There are violent clashes between Khan supporters and the police. More than 140 lawsuits are filed against him, with the intention of disqualifying him from being elected, says Imran Khan, when we reach him at his home in Lahore, Pakistan. Imran Khan, is your life still in danger? The people who I am uh, contesting elections against are the two family mafias. They're not political parties, they're family mafias. Only the, 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 the parties are dominated by just their own families. Okay, so, so it's not a question of a democratic political party, as you know. It's just, and so these people have made so much money. And their money making, the corruption is legendary. It's reported in the Western newspapers too. And like in the developing world, what happens is they, they, they steal the money and then they take it abroad. So they do damage twice. Once when they steal the money and twice when they send it abroad which means that we eventually put pressure on our dollar because when you buy dollars and send them abroad, uh, it, uh, it puts pressure on your currency, which devalues. So, and then devaluation causes uh, inflation and poverty. So this is, this is the same with most of the developing world. The ruling elites of the developing world steal money and take it outside in offshore accounts and Western capitals. And their countries go more into poverty. They cause poverty by doing that. Uh, so, number one, they have huge amounts. They made huge amounts of money, and they, when I, when, when through this conspiracy, when they removed me from power, what they did was that they gave themselves immunity from the corruption cases, and the corruption cases were about five billion dollars. So they gave themselves immunity. Now, the reason why my life is in danger is because they are worried that whenever there are elections, all the opinion polls are that we sweep the elections. Out of the 37 by-elections, we have swept 30 of them. So, you know, they know that uh, my party is poised to win. So they are running away from elections. But if they have to have elections, they do not want me to be in power. So hence my life is threatened. You want elections to take place as soon as possible, whereas the government wants them as late as possible. When will they happen? Rosa, look, what we want is the constitution to be implemented. The constitution of Pakistan is very clear. The moment you dissolve your parliaments, whether it is federal or provincial, elections have to be held within 90 days. This is the constitution of Pakistan. So I, we dissolved our two governments out of the four provinces. We, my party was in power in two of them. So we dissolved the two, two governments. By the way, this is what the, all the senior leadership of the political parties, even the then who was the army chief, General Bajwa, they kept telling me that, look, if you want elections, dissolve your parliament, your governments. So we did. Now, once we dissolve our government, they, they are now running away from elections. They refuse to hold elections in 90 days. We went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has given a verdict that the elections have to be held in 90 days. But the government is refusing to provide money for the election, saying we don't have the money or saying we can't give security. So it's all excuses. But the Supreme Court now is standing firm that the elections have to be held within 90 days in these two provinces. So all we want is the Supreme Court uh, verdict to be implemented according to the Constitution. How instable is Pakistan? The instability is because there is political instability because there are no elections. The government is, is uh, a, 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 one of the worst governments formed with a 12-party coalition, which means there's no governance there. When you have 12-party coalition, it's... It's uh, everyone having a share of the pie. There's no governance. But the worst is our economy has, has since one year when we were, were taken out of power, the economy has tanked. 
So we have the worst economic indicators in our history. We are basically bankrupt. We have, our rupee has lost 35% of its value in just a space of 11 months. We have the worst inflation in our history of Pakistan, especially the sensitive price index, which means common people, they, the things that they, that they eat on or the kitchen stuff, it's, it's almost 50% inflation. So worst inflation, then the rupee, rupee falling means you know, the, the everything imported, oil, everything has gone up. And, and we are, and inflation is not being controlled. But then the other thing is we have, we have now from 6% growth rate a year ago under us, it's now gone down to 0.4%. So that means massive unemployment, 50% of industries closed. So uh, and revenues are falling, exports are going down. So therefore, all the economic indicators are going south. Now, the only way out of this mess is to have political stability, which comes from free and fair elections. But as I said, free and fair elections, they are petrified of because they're scared I will come back into power. There have been clashes between your people and the police. Will the situation escalate? I'll tell you what was the clashes. First of all, there is only one political party in Pakistan that, that does not want violence, and that's my party. Why? Because we want elections. If you want elections, the one thing that will stop the elections is that the government already claiming there's a, there's a, a insecurity. They will claim that there's a, 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 they, they cannot provide security to the country. They're already making that excuse. So if we have political violence, it will give a government the opportunity to delay the elections. So therefore, it is not in our interest for there to be violence. But what, what it is in the government's interest to have violence. So what they did, they have twice, in fact, three times attacked my house. And why have all my people came, the, the people, uh, two, three thousand people outside, because the, why are the people outside my house? So you should understand this. The people who tried to assassinate me, which I told you in the beginning, are all in power. Everyone here believes me that the government will try and kill me again. So when, that's why the people are here to protect me. This is about so far five times the police has come to arrest me. Not in my house when I was in Islamabad. But, and every time people found out, they would rush to my house. Why? Because firstly, they're all trumped up charges. People in this country know me for 50 years. I've never broken a law. I'm the most well-known Pakistani in this country. I'm the biggest fundraiser in the... Uh, and I'm the biggest fundraiser in the country. Because, you know, I have, I have done the biggest charity work. So people... The reason I do it is because people trust me with their money. So they do not believe that I, in last five or six months, I have 445 criminal cases against me, 40 cases of terrorism. So each time the case goes to the, the court, we end up in a court, the cases get thrown out because they all, I mean, you even a hardened criminal cannot have 15 criminal cases in one day. Even, a, you know, even the worst terrorist cannot have committed so many crimes in such a short space of time. So no one believes it. People come outside because they realize that once they arrest me, then they will take me to prison and they, people feel that they will kill me there, they will poison me. So everyone feels that because they've tried to do it once before. Pakistan's economy is in free fall and has no deal with the IMF. We have to have IMF because we, we don't have dollar reserves. So that means we need respite, you know, until we can generate our own dollars. We need IMF's help. But what we want to do is to have our own program, which we can sell to the IMF, rather than, you know, the IMF standard prescription. The problem with IMF is that they tighten everything and they curtail the growth rate. And when, you, when your growth goes down, your wealth creation goes down, it takes away your ability to pay your debts. I mean, if in a house I'm, I'm, I have got debts, the only way I can pay my debts is if I have earnings. But if you, if you, if you curtail the growth rate, 
which means your wealth creation, how are you going to pay your debts? Because they just keep increasing. So we, we are coming up with a program and we will, uh, if we ever, if, if and when, God willing, we come into power, we will have our own program with the IMF, what we intend to do.